Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another First Friday event. This evening, we present a musical event with the Juniper String Trio, a group of a family of amazing musicians. And one of the things I've always appreciated about this trio is that you see not just their love for the music, but you see their enthusiasm in their love of the music by the way that they play. And I, I love the fact that Chris takes the time to give us background about each piece. The first piece by Beethoven is one of my, my favorites. And I really appreciated how he begins each part explaining the history behind it, why that music is different, the important movements that are held within it. Um, all of that paints a picture of the artists who created this music as it's presented through the Juniper String Trio. So I always enjoy that. And so without further ado, here they are. Sit back and enjoy. Welcome to the Juniper String Trio concert from our home. Um, I'm Christopher Costanza. I'm Ezra Costanza. And I'm Deborah Fong. And we are, in fact, a family. Uh, Deborah and I live here. Ezra grew up in this home. And it's so much fun to be able to play music for you today from this space. Um, we are playing some classics of the String Trio repertoire today, along with a couple of unexpected pieces later in the program. Um, we will begin with Beethoven, uh, specifically his very first string trio. He wrote five string trios uh, early in his career. Around 1796, he wrote this piece. And within just a short period of time, he wrote the other four. Uh, this is his Opus 3 in E-flat major. Uh, it's quite clear that it was inspired by the E-flat divertimento by Mozart. Mozart had died five years prior to the composition of this particular Beethoven work, uh, and it's it's you know, quite obvious to us, anyhow, that uh, Beethoven heard that piece, uh, was aware of it, and was inspired by it, not only because of the fact that it's in the same key, but structurally it's the same. It's a six-movement work, uh, large-scale sort of divertimento, we would call it. Uh, maybe, I don't know, is it, is it safe to say it would be kind of like party music? Uh, let's yeah. say we're having a party today, <laughs> yes. and it's party music, <laughs> unlike, you know, a sort of tr more, more traditional four-movement form, which you hear a little bit later in Beethoven's uh, string trio output. Uh, interesting thing about Beethoven's string trios is that you kind of sense that he is imagining writing string quartets, but maybe he wasn't quite ready to do so yet, at least in his mind. Uh, not much after this, in his Opus 18, he wrote his first set of string quartets. So uh, you'll hear some of that coming through, I think, in the trio uh, in terms of how he distributes parts. Sometimes he'll write double stops. So you sense him trying to fill in that extra voice that's missing. Uh, which sometimes means, means that Ezra's playing, you know, viola and second violin part. Um, well, <laughs> Double duty there. You didn't know you were getting yourself into that, did you? Um, but in, <laughs> in any case, uh, this is a, a delightful early period Beethoven work. This movement, this first movement is marked Allegro con Brio, so it's a lively movement uh, characterized by syncopated rhythms and triplets uh, in the development section, uh, flowing eighth note, beautiful second theme, for example. Um, but it is a large-scale sonata form movement, so there's a first section of exposition, there's a development of the ideas in the first section, and then a return to the first section, which closes the movement. Thank you. 
And now I'll play for you one of the unaccompanied suites uh, for cello by J.S. Bach. Uh, today I have for you the third in C major. Uh, cellists often say that the, the, the third kind of works maybe the best on the instrument because we have this beautiful low C string, uh, which we get to take advantage of from time to time in the course of playing the piece. Uh, it's, it's a really energetic, interesting, exciting piece, I think. Uh, as is the case with all six of the unaccompanied suites. It's in six movements. So it begins with a prelude, followed by five dance movements. So the first of those is the allemande, uh, which in this case is a little unusual compared to other allemandes because it has a sort of snappy rhythm. So there's a little bit of a bounce and lilt to this allemande. Then comes the courant, which is kind of a, a, a scurrying, flowing, moving movement in eighth note rhythm. Um, it's in three, four time, uh, but it feels like it's just kind of going from point A to point B uh, with, with, on a mission, so to speak. So it's a lively courant. Uh, then we get sort of the emotional centerpiece of the suite, which is the sarabande. Uh, slow in three with a, a pulse emphasis on the second beat of the three. Uh, next come the Borés, which may be the most famous movements of uh, any of the box suites. Uh, and, uh, well, I'll just give you an example. Probably you've heard that before. Uh, and I said Borés, plural, because there are two of them. Uh, Boré one, then there's a Boré two, which is in a contrasting C minor. And then back to the Boré one. And when I play the Boré one again, you'll know we're near the end of the movement. Finally, we have a jig, which is basically translated as jig, so it's a lively movement in 3-8 time. So this will be the C major suite, suite number three uh, by J.S. Bach. Uh, for those of you keeping track, it's BWV1009. <laughs>
of the Pie Jesu movement from Maurice Duraflay's Requiem, which was written in 1947. Um, this arrangement is made by a contemporary composer that is in this room right now, none other than my father, Christopher Costanza. Oh. Um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I was in the midst of grad school and I came home for three months, as many people did. Um, and this was a project that, I, that my dad was working on and we were really pleased to be able to present it to you today. Well, thank you for that introduction. 
and uh, to call me a composer, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Um, I haven't done that much arranging, but this one was a labor of love. Um, Deborah and I were part of a group at Stanford with St Stanford Chamber Chorale and Steve Sano, our colleague there, uh, that was able to perform the piece and record it just a few years ago. Uh, that recording is available on Apple Music. Um, in any case, uh, yes. in, in the original of this movement is for organ, uh, a low female voice, in this case contralto on our recording, but it can be a mezzo-soprano or, uh, I've heard it done with a, a child singer as well, like a boy sort of low soprano, uh, and, um, and solo cello. So uh, I was inspired because I had so much fun uh, playing the piece when we did that recording uh, to uh, you know, rearrange it for this group. The challenge is that uh, there are more than three voices most of the time. So you'll hear us playing lots of double stops, lots of chords. This is the uh, disclaimer. Disclaimer, no, no disclaimer. But it is challenging in that way. The other thing that's challenging about it is that it's in the key of A flat major, which is not um, the most intuitive natural key on a stringed instrument. Uh, however, uh, we hope that it is worth the effort, and we certainly love to love playing the piece. And uh, here we have it now, the P.A. Yezu from Maurice Duro plays Requiem Opus 9.
The next piece we're going to play for you is written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This is his string trio, Divertimento in E flat major, Kirschel 563. It was written in 1788, and at its premiere, Mozart played the viola part. Uh, this was also written in the same year as his final three symphonies and his opera Così Van Tutte. We're going to play for you a minuet movement, which is super charming. Mozart. Thank 
And now on to music by J.S. Bach. We will be playing four of the three-part symphonias or inventions. Uh, originally, of course, for keyboard. Um, I have fond memories of playing them when I was quite young on the piano. Um, so you may remember, those of you who heard Deborah and I play the September program for you, that we played some of the two-part inventions by Bach. Well, these are just a little more complicated because they have three voices instead of two. Uh, listen very carefully for the way the voices bounce off of each other. Uh, Bach was a master at counterpoint, and in particular, uh, I guess I would say uh, imitative counterpoint, uh, where you hear a voice and then you hear the same or a similar voice in another instrument in this case. And in fact, we feel that um, playing the pieces this way on three different instruments allows for one to hear that clarity a lot more than on a keyboard even, because the uh, distinctive quality of each instrument allows the voice to come through clearly. So listen for the way in which these melodic lines um, will pass around from voice to voice throughout each of these four. So we'll be playing for you number one, which is in C major, number three, which is in D major, number eight in F major, and finally number ten, which is in G major. Thank you. 
Amazing. I, I hope that you all enjoyed that presentation as much as I do. Um, always incredible. Thank you, Juniper String Trio, for bringing so much joy uh, to us during December here and the holidays. Greatly appreciate you, each one of you, and your amazing talents. Now, music really does soothe the savage beast, as they say. And with the stress of the pandemic, with the stress of holidays, um, stress of work, stress, stressful time for everyone. And the holiday should be a time of joy. And so hopefully this evening's presentation has brought you some joy, relieved a little bit of stress by experiencing this wonderful music. Um, so again, thank you, Juniper String Trio. You guys are incredible. Now, next month will not be musical in the usual sense. <laughs> um, next month, we'll be talking about foxes with the fox guy. Bill's coming back to give us an update of what's happening with the foxes that he looks after and takes care of. So look forward to seeing you then. Hope you all have most enjoyable holidays. Remember, this first Friday event is sponsored by the Woodside Arts and Culture Committee, a group of like-minded volunteers sponsored by the town of Woodside. And this evening I'm wearing our thank you gift from the town, which is our hat on the back, it says volunteer. So if you're interested in volunteering, for any of the committees at the town of Woodside, be sure to go on the town website. You'll see where openings are. And if there's something that uh, interests you, it's a great way to give back to the community and you get an incredible adventure, which is only possible by joining your town and helping to make it better as my colleagues here on this committee try to do once a month with our first Friday. So, Take care of each other. Stay well. See you next month. Good night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another First Friday event. This evening, we present a musical event with the Juniper String Trio, a group of a family of amazing musicians. And one of the things I've always appreciated about 
this trio is that you see not just their love for the music, but you see their enthusiasm in their love of the music by the way that they play. And I, I love the fact that Chris takes the time to give us background about each piece. The first piece by Beethoven is one of my, my favorites. And I really appreciated how he begins each part explaining the history behind it, why that music is different, the important movements that are held within it. Um, all of that paints a picture of the artists who created this music as it's presented through the Juniper String Trio. So I always enjoy that. And so without further ado, here they are. Sit back and enjoy 